up whatever you want. Kim, are you good at gavels? Or? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to this evening's planning board meeting. Um, it's a little after seven, so we're going to get under our way. Today is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. We are in Cahill Auditorium, and the record can show that we do have a full board, um, along with our alternate member present this evening. Uh, our first public hearing isn't going to start until 7.15, so as we customarily do, we're going to jump down um, to some of the stuff at the bottom of our agenda, if you have an agenda and you're following along. Um, I'm going to start with the master plan update. So the master plan steering committee, um, which I am the planning board's representative on, has been meeting this week with um, different stakeholders um, in the town through this, uh, what we're calling technical committees. So it's small groups of uh, residents that are meeting with uh, different facilitators from the master plan steering committee. Um, we met yesterday, um, yesterday evening, we held two sessions in Cahill auditorium and we also had a session I think was downstairs um, on uh, natural resources and sustainability. The two that were in Cahill auditorium last night were public facilities and also economic development. So we had some really great conversations around that and we will be um, hosting two more technical sessions on Thursday evening, one for transportation and traffic and one for housing. So we'll be summarizing that and the data that comes out of that will be most likely presented at the next master plan steering committee meeting, which is scheduled for, is that the May 18th meeting at the library? Uh, yes, it is, Madam Chair. All right, so we'll be talking about that at, on May 18th and it's actually scheduled at the library. So make note of that if you have been following our meetings. Um, we also have um, master plan in-person updates at the May 9th or June 13th planning board meeting. So we've been talking as uh, part of the summary of where we are as a master plan steering committee. We're going to be going on a kind of road show to all the different committees to talk about what we've been doing and get their feedback on the strategies we're talking about as we move into the final phase of our master plan where we look at how are we going to implement the work we've been doing and get that um, working throughout all different departments in the town. As um, if you want to follow along or you want to look at any of the information we've been working on to date, you can uh, check out the master plan link which is on the website. It's also at the bottom of the agenda. And I don't know if there's anything that um, Director Santucci Razi would like to add, but we've been spending a lot of time the last couple of weeks on this, and it's been really yesterday the discussions were fantastic. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing what we've been talking about um, into the community in the next couple of months. So keep an eye out. Director Santucci Razi, you didn't want to add anything? I don't have anything else, Madam Chair. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> We'll move up to the old new business section of the agenda. Um, the first thing on that is in-person meetings. Um, I believe this pertains to the remote meeting participation. Um, during COVID, the state had, extent, had um, um, allowed for remote participation through Zoom meetings um, as an amendment to the open meeting law. That waiver was extended through March 31st of 2025. We're already back in person, but if we were meeting via Zoom, that extension would essentially allow us to continue meeting via Zoom until March 31st, 2025. So um, some other boards and some state boards are still meeting via Zoom and they most likely will continue unless um, that gets, um, that, that, ex that waiver um, is ended. So an update on, <clears throat> Town Council Order 22-073, 135-608 floodplain. Uh, Director Santucci Razi, do you want to provide that update? Uh, if I may, through the chair, thank you. Um, so a couple months ago, we had presented uh, to the planning board an updated uh, floodplain bylaw in accordance with FEMA's model bylaw. Uh, we were working with a representative from the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, we prepared drafts. We vetted those drafts through them. They were acceptable. Um, after the planning board recommendation, I brought that ordinance to the uh, subcommittee of the council, uh, ordinance and rules, received a favorable recommendation, and then presented that to the full council, which also unanimously voted to adopt that. Uh, Post-adoption, we were um, asked to send the uh, signed um, ordinance into 
uh, DCR so that we could demonstrate that it has in fact been heard and passed locally. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Connor and I were very upset. Connor did uh, the majority of the work on this initiative for the department. Um, the person that, that reviewed it and said it was acceptable said that they had problems with it. Um, so we went back to the drawing board. We've made more changes and we've uh, sent it back out uh, for comment and this time I've looped in directly with FEMA. So uh, we have that out there, that revision, um, and I will not be presenting or filing anything uh, with the council. We'll have to make another amendment um, until I hear from FEMA that it's actually acceptable to them. So pretty disappointed. I actually explained that there's a cost associated with advertising um, and was there an opportunity to wait until the draft maps are, are back out those have been delayed. They did release some stuff about them earlier this week. Um, and I was told, no, you have to get it done right away. So I will still try to pursue. Um, it's very minor edits that they're looking for at this point. Um, but to advertise three times the planning board and the council is, is, is a little bit of a burden on, on our end. So we'll, we'll continue to pursue that, and I'm pursuing, um, you know, basically above this person that told us it was okay, um, because unfortunately we just don't have the, the time and the capacity to um, do things, you know, over and over again. <clears throat> so that will be back when I receive the sign-off from, from FEMA in writing. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, thank you for your due diligence on that. That is a lot to work through, um, and I know it is, you know, helping to protect the residents in those districts. So thank you. Zoning amendments, definitions, use table and parking requirements, brewery, production studio, and function facility. Um, Director Santucci Razi, yes, through please. The chair. So we, um, we're looking at some different um, uses in the ordinance. Um, there has been some interest um, from various breweries. As folks know, we permitted a brewery under our light manufacturing ordinance. And while they are manufacturing things there, it's really not a one-for-one -one, um, fit. So we're looking to um, produce some language that not only deals with the production, but the tap room and, and sort of the other accessory features that come along with the production of um, malt beverages. Um, and then the production studio, there seems to be all this interest um, in Massachusetts for uh, production of, of all different um, types of media. Um, so we'll be looking into that. And then um, function facility is something that um, it has been lacking in Braintree for a long time. Um, and we don't really have any sort of standalone. We have the clubs and the lodges that fall under a different definition. but. Just trying to look at some different options for uses um, in our use table and parking requirements. So I've started to do some research. Connor and I are going to kind of work together on some language. It's pretty straightforward, just definitions and and parking um, parking requirements. But um, there's a chance that um, I'd like to kind of move on that. Um, I'd like the planning board to be the sponsor, <clears throat> so I can have some definitions to review next month. Okay, sounds good. Um, do any board members have any comments or questions on anything we've discussed so far, Member Connolly? Uh, question about the definitions. Um, maybe about a year ago, we had a lot of med spa type groups that were coming mm -hmm. in to apply, and there wasn't a great fit there too, as far as um, I think it was like nurse injection for Botox and things like that. Is, is that a definition that you would look at within this? Um, if I may, through the chair to, to Member Conley's question, we put those under retail and services, and okay. we have a lot of them that fall into that category. Um, <clears throat> we don't see it as a concern because that's the category, that particular situation. The applicant thought it was thought it was a concern, um, but we just had another one that's going in, I believe, on is it Quincy Ave? You know, the, the, you know, the days of just manicures and facials are, are long gone. You can get a lot of things done at, at a spa. So we don't see that as an issue. Um, but if that's something that the board wanted us to look at, um, we could. It's just difficult because a lot of those places also have uses that wouldn't fall into medical spa. 
So when we think about retail and services, you know, it kind of covers everything from a, a pedicure to Botox to the, they do fat contouring, they do, they do all kinds of things. Um, so we didn't see it as an issue, but if that's something that the board thinks we should look at, um, we could. The, the concern on that end is we have a lot of those already, <clears throat> and they fall under retail and services. Um, and to now kind of introduce um, something that's, that is a different category would kind of create, you know, a little bit of um, inconsistency in how we, how we look at uses. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Member Makami. Yep, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I recall when we permitted uh, Widowmaker mm -hmm. Brewery that one of the um, consequences that came out was food trucks. So I'm just curious if food trucks will be tied into the brewery or, I, I don't know, food trucks generally. Um, obviously, they're very popular. We, the issue, of course, with Widowmaker was we didn't really expect them to show up there. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of parking in the back there. So just, just curious. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something um, that, you know, the definition, I think, you know, and, and we've, I've looked at some, some definitions, but uh, the option for, like, on-site food, I know some of them serve, um, like, appetizers or they just have pizza that they make in-house. Um, so we could say um, provides food either in-house or accessory and that when we look at these now that we've had this experience um, we can be a little bit more um, ahead of the game in understanding okay what else is going to come along with this use and make the provisions dedicated spaces for the food truck so it's parked out of aisles and doesn't displace parking spaces uh, things like that okay thank yep. you Anybody else? No? All right, great. Um, it's a little after 7.15, so we're gonna move up in the agenda to the uh, first item on our agenda is the um, new public hearing for 79 Pleasant View Avenue, Planning Board File 23- What is this? I wrote over the dash, is it 09 or 03? Um, great zero three grading permit for uh, John Mento. Mento Homes as the applicant. Um, so the applicant has already come up to the podium. Um, if we could have staff read into the record um, the legal notice and then we'll get underway. Thank you, Madam Chair. Notice is given by the Planning Board under the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Sections 11, and Brace Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 135, Article 5, Article 11, and Article 12 that a public hearing will be conducted on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 at 7.15 p.m. in the Braintree Town Hall. The Planning Board will consider a grading permit application from the applicant, John Mento, Mento Homes. The applicant is proposing to regrade portions of the site in support of a new single family dwelling. The project involves approximately 4,750 square feet of disturbance, importing 260 cubic yards of fill, and the construction of several retaining walls up to four feet in height. The site is 6,000 square feet and has an address of 79 Pleasant View Ave is zone residence B as shown on assessor's plan 3041 plot 156. Great, thank you very much. Um, if you just would like to introduce the project um, and yourself, Mr. Hardy, and then. Okay, good evening. Um, my name is Sean Hardy, a professional engineer with Hardy and Mann Design Group from in, located in Weymouth. Um, I am the engineer for the applicant Mento Homes. Um, the existing site is 79 Pleasant View Ave. Uh, there is an existing residence that burned a number of years ago. Um, I think it's been before this board as a different project uh, about a year or so ago for a, a requesting permission to construct a much larger residence. Um, but again, so the existing residence is here it, it has been destroyed by fire. It's, it's in a state of extreme disrepair. Um, the lot slopes pretty steeply from about elevation 116 out at the street down to approximate elevation 98 in the back. There's a series of retaining walls and stairs and steps to get down through, through all that elevation change. Um, 
there's currently no stormwater controls on the site and there's also not a driveway so the cars kind of parked there's a widened out sidewalk up in this area so they kind of park out up there so we're proposing to demolish that residence um, regrade the lot in order to provide a proposed off-street parking area um, just to the utilizing basically what's more or less an existing curb cut again it's kind of a leveled out sidewalk um, and add some fill to make it a usable front yard and to allow for that driveway um, in addition we're proposing we know we acknowledge that we trigger a minor stormwater permit through um, your stormwater department so we're proposing a series of five Caltech subsurface chambers um, there's proposed three in the rear to take the roof flows and there's proposed two out front to capture a trench drain at, at the driveway and divert flows into there and those are sized to hold the hundred year NOAA Atlas 14 storm that's required through the stormwater um, department. Overall, this represents about a 4,750 square foot area of disturbance and it's going to involve the import of 260 approximate cubic yards of fill. Um, that fill will come from Mento Landscaping their yard on 1157 Washington Street, and if there's not enough there, they will truck from G. Lopes in Taunton and bring it to the Mento yard to process it, sort it, and, and deliver it to the site. Great, That's thank you. <clears throat> Just a reminder to the public that this is a public hearing, so if anybody from the audience um, would like to come up and ask any questions during um, this presentation, um, please feel free to come on up um, and not, I'll, I'll take a break from board comment if anybody wants to come up, but I'll start. Is there anybody from the audience that wants to talk? All right, great, come on up. If you could just state your name and address for our note keeping records. I'm Carol Hoey. And you might have to just, it's also, oh, thank I'm you. Carol Hoey, and it's my husband Jim, Jim Hoey. We live at 69 Pleasant View. Right, right beside. Right beside. And there's a public way between us. And we take care of that. We own some. All four of us own some, and we are, we're thankful they're buying the house and tearing it down. It's been an eyesore for two and a half years. Um, but that dirt road, we take care of. We have a landscaper come once a week and mow the lawn, keep it nice, do a, a spring cleanup and a fall cleanup. And that's one of the conditions that I would like to keep once they have all the equipment in and ruin the whole dirt road. I would just like it to be put back the way it was. Okay. That's all. That, no, and one more. Uh, French drains. I think you mentioned something about drains. But I know the people down back, Take a lot they get of water. flooded. And, and now with them raising it up, I don't want the water coming over to my house or my other neighbors that are here also. And that's okay. all we ask. Okay. Um, I guess as a follow-up to your comment, um, maybe the applicant could just speak to construction sure. staging areas um, and just about the plan for the 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 paper street that's next to the property. Um, so we are proposing to bring the fill in up through where the proposed driveway is and construct it th from that way. We're not proposing to go in and access that paper street in any way. Um, and as far as for the water and, and the drainage, so as I um, indicated now, it's a single family house with no stormwater controls at all. So we're proposing to take the roof leaders from the proposed house and capture them in the three Caltech chambers back here and the driveway in a trench drain and pipe it to these two chambers proposed out here and those are sized for a 100 year NOAA Atlas 11 design storm so it's like almost a nine inch rainfall in 24 hours so they're um, they're sized to ho hopefully help reduce what makes it overland that is a pretty sloped area so um, the other part of some of the grading, and I guess I failed to mention it, is the backyard behind the house is trying to make it fairly level to make that a little bit usable too before it slopes back down to the, there's an existing retaining wall that we'll be meeting there. Okay. So it sounds like they will not be using the, the area, the paper street, the dirt road. It doesn't sound like they'll be using that during construction, so that should be preserved just as a follow-up to your question. Uh, they're gonna they'll build the house it sounds like from Pleasant View Avenue onto the site so um, okay great thank you is there any other public comment 
Um, all right, well, if you change your mind, come on up. Uh, Member McCommy, do you have any comments or questions? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so what is that paper road used for today? Parking? Ma'am, if you would like to respond, you need to come up to the microphone. Thank you. It's, it's a grass area now. Okay. It's just all grass. And in the winter, we took down all the trees that were in the side, and the kids just use it for sledding in the winter. And it's just something nice to look at. Okay. It's just a nice sure. little street. And, and you mentioned there were other neighbors around there, so I there's, assume There's four of us. We're all on the corner lot. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, but you seem like you take care of it. We do. So, yeah, we do. Okay, so it's kind of a non-issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, we I, were just afraid that they were going to bring. I mean, I don't care. I bring up the equipment because they'd probably have to. That's the easiest way to get in there, I would say. But I figured Mentos would probably fix it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess uh, on the ch it is Mento landscaping, and an off on the off chance that they do need to access it, I'm I'm sure it, and, and would gladly accept a condition that it gets loomed and seeded and brought back to the same condition. They're going to be doing all that on the yard here as well. So, um, but again. The gut or how they were planning on doing it was just coming right from the front. Right. Great. And, um, you know, like we, as you know, because you've, you've been here many times, has any of this work started yet before the per grading permit has been granted? No, I'm okay. sure much to many people's dismay, it's a disaster out there. But yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I've seen it. It's not nice. Thank, thank you. Um, obviously, the new owners are making quite an investment here. Uh, in infrastructure, in the drainage system, and so on. So we f do you feel that that will have a positive impact um, for the abutters and everything? I do. Um, so the drainage, those chambers represent 558 cubic feet of stormwater storage, and that's excluding the infiltration rate. So I, I think it's going to be a help for the neighbors downstream. In addition, the flattening some of the slope in the front yard, getting rid of some of those retaining walls that were there, um, flattening the slope a little bit in the backyard, that all helps as well. Right. And again, with making such a large investment, um, I'm going to assume that they're going to build a nice house, but it's not going to overwhelm the lot. No, it's actually a, it's a pretty small residence, about an 800 okay. square foot residence. Um, oh, wow. The house okay. that's there existing was pretty small. Um, we had the proposed initially to be slightly larger, but it was brought to our attention that because that is a paper street that has a front setback, so we, we made the house even a little bit smaller. Okay, thank you. It would be, it, it'll be nice to get this fixed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Member McConnell. <coughs> Member Craw, do you have any comments or questions? Um, my question had to do with the drainage also. I see the retaining wall that's going to remain along the, towards the backyard of the property. It looks like the sloping will run to the corner of that wall. It, is, it, is the sloping going to go into that um, drainage device, the Coltec back there, or is no, that? The, the yard in the back or the grass area will just continue to go. Um, the only, uh, I'll say, drainage improvement, mm -hmm. if you could call it that, is that we're flattening it out a little bit. The only flows that are going into those three chambers are from the roof. So all four corners of the roof leaders are being piped into that. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was all. Thank you. The grading was more or yep. less just to bend it and give the cover that I needed on the chambers. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Member Carl. Member Kent, any comments or questions? Uh, I drove by yesterday and uh, was concerned about the, the paper street and how that was going to fare, but I think you've covered my questions, so thank you. Thank you. Member Grove, any comments or questions? No, Member Connolly, any comments or questions? The paper street, what was that created to provide access to or from? It's, I mean, it's Argyle Street, so it's a continuation. The Argyle Street exists up for, mm -hmm. across the street, and I think it might exist further down. It's just it was never constructed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had a couple follow up questions to the drainage. Um, the drainage situation at the front, so I noticed there was a catch basin, an existing catch basin with a small section of curb at the begin at the front of the house. And I'm wondering, will the driveway be constructed such that water will, are we gonna maintain the gutter line? I'm just concerned about like if that catch basin were to be clogged and fail and that neighborhood is all pitching through there that they would end up getting kind of a ton of water flowing down their driveway. 
Um, so I'm just wondering what the plan would be to kind of help alleviate that from a grading perspective, and I couldn't quite tell, so. It's tough with this, such a small scale, too. Yeah. Um, the intent would be to maintain the, the gutter line um, and a driveway, but the, just the typical, it's a little hump to get up in it, because there is a sidewalk that runs down there, um, and then start with the pitch down into okay. our property. Okay. And then the metric for collecting the driveway runoff is is a trench drain yes. at the end of the driveway? Yes, down at the at the end of the paved area and with some separation that's intended to not be paved there, just in, you know, if they need to remove snow or whatever and put it there and, and ideally not clog the trench drain. And then the stairway that's just um, near the trench drain on the left side, I guess, yeah, is that going? It's the, so the driveway's higher, so it's just to be able to provide a little access down to the backyard that way. So it steps down? Yes. Okay. And then as you go to the other side of the site, um, there's like two sets of stairs. So the whole front yard is around elevation 115 and a half. And then do those stairs step down to like a side flat area? They do. So that exists now. So under existing, you come down some stairs and there's a patio area and then there's more stairs down. It's so because of the, the, the amount of grade change on, the, on a fairly small lot, it looks like that's how they um, have done it. We didn't want to get too heavy in touching anything on this property line because these neighbors, there's a, it's a retaining wall that kind of, it's on this property, it's on their property, it's, it's, it's both and I don't want any part of going near it, touching it, yeah. or anything that's going to make it fail. Okay. So none of the proposed wall work that ties into these existing walls, like the existing walls won't be, they'll yeah. be able to be maintained with yeah. that work? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any further comments or questions. Um, is there anybody else from the public that would, that has any comments or questions? Um, is there any, um, I guess, is there anything from staff uh, from the staff report or anything you would like to um, draw our attention to or just a summary of what we have? Thank you, Madam Chair, if I may. Um, the staff report speaks to the application that was submitted. The applicant triggered the grading permit um, by filling more than two feet in height in addition to importing over 250 cubic yards of fill. Um, the staff report uh, provides draft findings and conditions. Um, the draft conditions are tailored to Article 12 uh, specifically incites the applicant's improvements. Um, I would like to note that this is a conditional um, landscaping plan as part of the draft conditions. Um, the applicant did not submit one. There is existing vegetation on site um, that staff is hoping will remain. They are conditioned for proposed that if those trees were to come down, they are replanted at a three to one ratio. In addition to that, um, prior to the applicant even starting the activity, they provide staff with a landscaping plan for the proposed site. Um, aside from that, staff would like to make a comment that, pardon me, There's a condition that speaks to um, maintaining Pleasant View Ave as a part of the grading activity. We would like to include Argyle Road as well, so that way if they were to disturb that, then it has to be maintained. Okay. Is there any other public comment? All right. Um, we can have... Um, we can close the public hearing. So to close the public hearing, we would just need a motion. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion by Member Kent. Do we have a second? Second by Member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We also need a motion to enter into the record correspondence through the most recent date of uh, April 10th. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion by Member McCommy. Do we have a second? second? Second by Member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. So um, we have uh, draft conditions um, as uh, this evening presented. Um, 
have you had a chance as the applicant to review the conditions and you're all, all set with those? Yes, we no, no objections. Okay, great. Um, so, Chair, I'll entertain a motion on this application. Motion to grant grading permit for file 2303 with conditions in the staff report as modified to include any damage to the paperway shall be loam and seeded and put back in its current condition. Second. We have a motion by Member Craw and a second by Member Grove. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next, the next item on our agenda this evening is um, a continued public hearing for Town Council Order 23-004, Residences on Granite, RGPUD. Um, the, we have, the application pertains to a zoning map and zoning ordinance text amendment, creation of a PUD district. Um, and I believe, do our, Director Santucci Razi, are you, we have a continuance of that this evening. Yes, um, I Madam understand. Um, so, yep. Um, Attorney Marinelli, uh, on behalf of ZOM, uh, submitted a letter dated April 10th. Um, just for the board's information, there was a narrative submitted um, in accordance with our submission deadlines, and then subsequent to that, um, the modifications and changes that were outlined in the letter was submitted last Thursday, and I made it clear to uh, Attorney Marinelli and ZOM that it would not be possible for a complete review of those materials in advance of the meeting, uh, hence the request for continuance uh, to May 9th. All right, so uh, we need a motion to continue this to the May 9th meeting. We would be uh, noting it at 7.15. So do we have a motion by Member Grove? Do we have a second? Second by Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, great, thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is 8 through 10 and 40 Arnold Street, Planning Board File 20-02, Major Modification to Special Permit and Site Plan Review Decision and Use Special Permit, TLC Supply, Inc. is the applicant. Um, I'm actually gonna be stepping away for this one, so Member Crowell will be acting as chair. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to planning boiler file 2002 810 40 Elm Street. Um, Director Santucci Razi, was this one you or was yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, All right. Would you like yep. to go first? Um, uh, through the acting chair, if I may quickly, uh, as an update, um, since uh, I believe we continued at the last hearing, um, and since that time, I've been working um, with Attorney Marinelli uh, and Mr. Ross um, and his family uh, and, and Sean Hardy on um, revising the plans and addressing the comments in the staff report. Um, that has all been done to date. There is one minor. Um, revision to uh, one of the conditions that F Attorney Marinelli and I discussed earlier uh, today, which is in the email in your packet. Um, and what has happened with this proposal um, is the original decision uh, that was for Riverside Business Park, Mr. Lang is also here this evening. Um, what I did was I split it into two decisions. So there's a lot of responsibilities and a lot of different things, especially uh, in regards to the environmental remediation that is the responsibility of Mr. Lang. And those are all clearly outlined in the, um, the, this document here. Um, so that's sort of a rewritten version. And then in the staff report too, which outlines how the items in the original staff report have been addressed, but that also includes the uh, draft findings for the spe new special permit for the factory outlet use and also the conditions. And what I've done is um, the conditions that were in the 2002 original decision that have now been just allocated to Mr. Lang's portion, you can see in here that it just notes removed. So it's very easy to kind of track what was originally permitted and now how 
that development is going to be split into two ownership entities and essentially who is responsible um, for what. So the plans look great. Um, I don't have any comments, uh, just one that I wanted to note um, this evening um, in dealing with Mr. Ross and his organization. A very, very nice experience. Um, I, I, am, I hope more businesses like Mr. Ross has come to Braintree. He's diligent, he cares, he is there at the table responding to issues and making sure that all of the information that has been requested has been provided. Um, and I just wish we had more applicants like this, but I, I wanted to note that so that the board is aware and, and he's also aware um, and very excited to have him um, coming to Braintree. All his revised materials were just, um, just very pleasurable to review. Um, so any questions that the board has, I can answer those um, in regards to the two, two drafts we have here this evening. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Director. All right, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Good evening, Chairman, uh, Chairperson Croha, members of the board, Frank Marinelli, and I'm here with uh, Don Ross, who is the owner of TLC Supply, and also his uh, daughter, Rolanda uh, Ross Lee, who is the general manager and uh, oversees the day-to-day -day operations. Rolanda has her BS in marketing from Bentley, and uh, over the past 22 years, uh, TLC Supply has built quite a business, both for contractors, wholesalers, and uh, homeowners, uh, pretty much uh, dealing in any kind of uh, masonry or hardscape pro product. Uh, we've given to the board some of the background on the company. Uh, for the past 20 years, the product line has included brick, natural stone, such as granite, bluestone, concrete blocks, precast lintels and sills, granite, bluestone, brownstone, limestone, just about anything that you might need for uh, hardscape or masonry. So as Melissa um, described, and we want to thank the planning director for all of the work on this because this site, as the board knows, has been a, a complex permitting site. It's about uh, 16 acres, the entire site. I represent TLC Supply. George uh, Lang is here. George is the principal of uh, of Adam Street Enterprises, and they're rep represented by attorney Jerry Fong, who we've worked uh, very well with, and uh, Jerry has another uh, commitment tonight and can't be here, but uh, Melissa is working with him on the uh, second part of this decision. Our, our decision will concern the 3.24 acres that you see here, and it's really the southwest corner. Do you, do you have the uh, bigger overview to just show? Uh, so it's the southwest corner of the 16 acres, right down in there. And that site was previously permitted by the board and the Conservation Commission for a 49,000 square foot building. So our development program with TLC is significantly less. We have a approximate 4,900 square foot um, sales showroom and office um, in up in the uh, corner there. And then we have a 10,800 square foot uh, warehouse. Thanks, Sean. And, and that's, that's where product and, and uh, Don's fleet, et cetera, uh, for deliveries. And we have 21 parking spaces. We have palletized areas where uh, consumers, uh, contractors can come in and see the product and, and pick what they like. So uh, that pretty much is the operation. It's, it's uh, characterized as a factory outlet store because you have some retail, but it's less than 25%. As you, you know, our whole development program is uh, five plus about uh, 10, eight, so it's about 21,000, uh, it's about 16,000 uh, square feet of, of building, and um, our showroom is, is within the 25% that allows you to have the retail sales uh, as accessory to the, uh, to the commercial use. Um, the zoning is commercial, uh, it's 3.24 acres. The remaining 12.88 acres is the subject of a separate uh, permit, which Ms. Santucci Razi described. Uh, that will be going to Adam Street Enterprises to, to Mr. Lang's company. And that uh, pretty much carries forward a lot of the obligations of 20-02, which was the original permit. Uh, 
the original permit has uh, remediation obligations, uh, mitigation obligations, and um, traffic monitoring obligations. Our traffic report is on file for our part of the project, for the 3.24 acres, and we're, we're reducing a 49,000 square foot approval to just over 16,000 square feet. So that, uh, that results in significantly less vehicle trips, and that's pointed out in the VAI uh, traffic report that, that you have in the materials. Uh, so that's, that's the overview. Um, there, the, the river, the Manacquid River, and, and some of the other, the compensatory flood storage, all of those issues are on the 12.88 site, not on this particular site. Uh, Don and Rolanda are currently located on Vernon Street in Quincy. Um, they've been there for, for many years, and uh, they're, they're anxious to move to Braintree and to kick off this use of the former Graziano concrete plant. Um, this is a, a transformation of the site, hopefully to a, a, a nice business use, commercial use, but they'll be the first user in there. And um, we look forward to continuing to work with the town and being able to build the building and, and uh, open for business. So we're happy to answer any questions. Don and the team have reviewed the, the uh, conditions that are before you. Um, as Melissa spoke, we, we have, Don has spoken with her about some of the conditions. There's been some, some amendments, but it's all been very cooperative and um, we're, we're pleased with the decision as written and with the suggestions that were made. Great, thank you. One other point, we are, we're tying into the previously approved drainage, because that was peer reviewed before conservation and so forth. So rather than reinvent the wheel and do our own stormwater on our own site, um, Mr. Lang and Attorney Fong, we've done an agreement whereby we will connect to that drainage system which has already been peer reviewed. So uh, that's, and, and Sean can speak to that if you have any questions on stormwater and, and so forth. Okay, thank you. And this is a public hearing, a continuation of a public hearing. Is there anyone here from the public who has any questions or would like to speak on this application? Okay, I'll turn it over to the members then. Member McConaughey, do you have any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> my first question is for the director, and um, now that we're splitting these into two different decisions, has there been any uh, substantial progress made on the original uh, project, if you will? Um, yes, Mr. Lang has received the approval from the EPA okay. in regards to the remediation plan. Um, that was a, a very long effort. Um, and he's uh, started some demo work um, uh, for, on the batch plant as well. So um, I think this is sort of a combination of getting that approval and uh, Mr. Ross sort of interested in pursuing a portion of this. Uh, my understanding is that's really going to be the catalyst to now get things going. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, You'll have to excuse us, Mr. Mayor, and I, we haven't spoken about this project, I think, for a couple meetings, so it might be okay. a little rusty. So um, you just mentioned about tying in the drainage. Mm -hmm. So has, has any of that work started yet? And, um, uh, you know, in terms of the original plan, <laughs> and now we have new plan, how, how is that going to proceed? So, uh, God bless you. Uh, Mr. Lang will... Um, I know that Attorney Fong is working with um, Ms. santucci Rossi on the timing of that. We've also submitted, um, or they have submitted a, a sequencing plan of the activities that will occur, and that's in the record. It's pretty s substantial in terms of the timing of everything. Uh, the, the drainage, if I'm not mistaken, has not commenced yet, though, because demolition is currently uh, taking place on our site, which is where the cement plant was. So that's what Mr. Lang is doing now. Um, we do have a purchase and sale agreement which has significant provisions as to you know, the obligations in terms of demolition, in terms of grading, in terms of remediation, in terms of the drainage that we talked about, in terms of the 
the frontage, the road, the A and R plan that we'll be coming back to the board with to to create the 3.2 acre lot. So, but the you know the quick answer to your question is that the drainage uh, work has not started yet. Okay, and, and, and am I correct in assuming that? Um, operations won't start until the drainage is uh, completed? Yes, I mean, okay. we, we need to have things done before we can, we, we, I know Mr. Ross would tell you he'd like to be in there yesterday, but uh, the demo has to occur, there's um, the drainage, there's a remediation that goes along with the drainage, there's compensatory storage uh, activity. Uh, so I know that Melissa, uh, we'll be monitoring all of that, um, and 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 we will as well on the TLC side because uh, we want to be able to start construction. Great, thank you. Um, I know this is a larger site uh, for TLC than they have in Qu uh, Quincy, so um, when it's in full operation, I know we're going to have trucks, we'll have customers. You got you know product out there. Do we have enough protections in place for noise and dust, et cetera, for the, for the residents around the area? How, 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 will that, how will that work? Yeah, I mean, they, they uh, don't. Maybe Mr. Ross wants to I know that there's that. been some subcontractors on the property previously that had night calls and so forth. That's not the way it operates here. And actually, Don is the most articulate on his business. So I'll, I'll ask him to come up and give you a, okay. an explanation of what we, we put in the record, basically what the daily activities occur entail yeah. with uh, his, his, it's not a big You know, it, it, that's a busy area. It hasn't been busy for a long time, but now it's going to get busy. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, the site, because of where we are right now, we have uh, not a good flow of customers, you know, to make everything work. And that's why we designed it like that, that they'll come into that showroom park a lot, they come in and get their slip and then they're going to come out and come around this roadway if they have to get any larger material out here and there'll be an arm gate right here to control them so that things run smoothly and then, you know one of our yard guys will meet them and bring them over to what they need and we want control and flow you know just yeah. that's, so my that's question really was I, I know you want to control the flow but yeah. my question more was Noise, dust, you're going to have trucks coming in and out. Um, no. Are, are, are the residents going to be okay? Right now where we are, we're in a residential area. Yep. There's houses within 15 feet of our yard where our trucks park, where our forklifts are, and all that. And we've been there 23 years and not have a single complaint from anybody. Okay. We I remember, I remember you neighbors. said that last time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, we, we haven't have had some any problems. Confidence. And, you know, like our forklifts, they have special backup alarms on them. If there's no noise around them, you hardly even hear them. But when there's noise, the higher noise level goes, the higher the alarm goes. Okay. You know, very different alarm. So nobody even hears them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll find out. Yep. Yeah, and Mr. Marinelli, could you, could you remind us, in terms of the whole yard, um, I know we have some open space, and yeah, is that whole thing gonna be paved, or is that, uh, uh, is well, that gonna be dirt, or what's that gonna be? So Sean does have the, uh, oh, the zoning legend. We okay, do, I don't we, have it in yeah, front of Yeah, I think that. we have um, a bit more open space than required. <laughs> We've got about 26.1%, where 25% is required, so we, we don't have any variances on any of the dimensional requirements. So is it, but is the, is the yard gonna to be totally paved? It's gonna to be totally paved. Yes. This Got area it. is totally paved, yes. Um, yeah. There's perimeter landscaping, there's um, landscaping in here, there's landscaping here. This area um, is part of the lot, that's part of the, there's a, a depressed, a wetland area that's down here and it's gonna be constructed as a, a like a meadow type okay. with grasses as part of the remediation for flood storage. Um, additionally, there's more landscaping out front, doing area there, planting all around. So it, it's it's pretty much framed in with some landscaping that it's screened, it's shaded. You're not going to see really what's going on in there. Um, the other thing that was a concern through conservation, similar to you, but 
you know, not so much dust, but um, suspended solids or, or dirt that can migrate and get into the drainage system. So this area, one of the changes was that's now a proposed concrete apron with similar, like you see at a gas station, the positive limiting barrier with the grooved, mm. um, the grooves around it. And they have a sweeper on site that they monitor it daily and if need be, it'll get swept. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm all set, Madam Chair, thank you. Great, thank you, Member McCammy. Member Kent? Uh, just a couple of questions. So who are the patrons? Is this business to business or is this going to be people pulling up with their, you know, just residents pulling up? Oh, customers, their homeowners, contractors, everything. The municip municipal contractors, uh, you know, home building contractors, homeowners. Okay. Everybody. So the homeowner comes in with, uh, with the trailer on yeah. the back of the car and there's enough room. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. You know, that's why we built a nice showroom because we want it to, to be a nice place to go to, you know, clean and. A, yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking, you know, the pros with the trucks and the amateurs with their cars and the trailers. Oh, yeah, we got them. Yeah. yeah okay. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Member Grove. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Uh, Rossi, uh, on this, was notification sent out to the abutters list? Of course. Okay. And that that always happens on a, a modification or a substantial this modification? Was, this was advertised uh, in the newspaper and a butter notice. They'll also be notified of the decision. Okay, because uh, this is uh, an amendment to the existing, right? Yeah, but, but okay, that but this mean, is a separate hearing. It was advertised, Member Grove, in the newspaper and mailed to Abutters as if it was a new project. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Member Conway, um, I had a question. Um, if all goes well, when do you think you might outgrow this site? I don't know. Okay. That's, that's a hard question. I mean, um, we've outgrown where we were probably 15 years ago. We still, mm -hmm. so. still can manage. You just got to be a little bit smarter how you do things. Okay. Very good. Thank you, know. you. Thank you. I just had a couple questions. Does this w modification need to go through Conservation Commission? Yes. And what, what's the status with that? So uh, Sean filed the plans for conservation on uh, that order of conditions uh, and I think conservation is meeting in May Correct. yeah with the with the revised plan uh, the original plan that we the revised plan we filed complies with conforms to this plan so it's again uh, instead of doing our own stormwater on that 3.2 site we're going to plug into everything that was peer-reviewed at CONCOM which um, you're familiar with having been on the CONCOM so this was you know, quite a, uh, a project, complex project that was uh, peer reviewed and we're going to uh, take advantage of the fact that it was peer reviewed and that we can uh, be accommodated in that drainage. Okay. And I, the condition with the ANR, I, it wasn't clear to me and I haven't been out there since when I was on conservation and this was going through there, um, how far down Arnold goes, but do you, have you looked at, are you comfortable that there's no concerns with the a and r for this parcel being sort of down at the bottom of that road that doesn't come so off yeah when you come off of adams we're actually the last one up so uh the the requirement of the seller is to create uh the suitable roadway to come up that far and then um, the seller has the rest of that frontage when you come in off of adams street and it's you know, Sean can speak to it, but it's all been measured appropriately. Yeah, it, and it's in various forms of it. It actually is basically constructed. I was there the other day looking, because I was trying to respond to a comment from DPW about the location of a manhole. So I was out there and there was a truck parked in like way up the end there. It's, it's I mean, it's not like pavement, but it, it's certainly graded. There's retaining walls around it. There's piles of debris and this, um, concrete that's been poured as, as parking areas. Um, we do show some proposed grading to, to make it some grading 
has to happen as part of that. That was also part of what the original filing was going to include. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as constructing it is not a problem, but certainly we have in excess of the required frontage for the, to, for the form A, e even not including this bit that has to be regraded. Okay, great, thank you. And just the last question with the access coming around through the site, will there be cross access easements to, to run through the property? Yes, exactly. Um, there's a main drive and uh, there will be, that, that is actually located on um, Adams Street Enterprises property. Mm -hmm. So we'll have um, easements serving this property for access, for utilities, for drainage. Um, so we will have easements and uh, I know that the, the, the draft conditions require that and we're, we're going to be working on that. Um, Mr. Mr. Pong is away for two weeks, but you know we, we hope everything will move forward uh, when he gets back and we'll get what uh, Ms. Santucci-Razzi needs from uh, the TLC side and she'll work with Mr. Fong on their requirements. I know one of their requirements is that they have to submit a plan for the remaining 12.88 acres and make sure that that remaining parcel and development program complies. So I know that uh, she'll be looking at the whole thing. Okay, great. All right, is there anybody in the public that has any comments now? No, okay, staff, anything else to add after the back and forth? Um, I don't believe so. No, I think, I think everything's been covered, Madam Chair. Okay, all right. I think we're going to take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Member McCommy and a second by Member Grove. Okay. And now I think we need a motion to accept the correspondence through April 10th. Do we need to vote the first motion then? We do. Thank you, Member Grove. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the motion by Member McCommy and second by Member Grove to close the public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay. And now we'll move on to the correspondence list. All right. I have a correspondence list through April 10th. Do we have a motion to accept the correspondence into the record? So moved. Right. Motion by Member Grove. Second. And second by Member Kent. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, what do we have next? All right, so now, yes. Can you just make sure that um, any future motions, if they're going to be uh, in the positive, include um, the revisions to condition one, and that is just further clarifying responsibilities um, for the different parties. And that was the email from Attorney Marinelli dated April 11th uh, at 517. I just didn't want to go back in and change and reissue another draft. So okay. thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. So if there's no further comments, we'll accept a motion on the application. There's draft conditions dated April 6th and an email modification dated April 11th. So moved. Second. And Member Ken, is that motion to approve the modification? Okay, <laughs> motion by Member Kent, second by Member Grove. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right, the next item on our agenda is 125 Union Street, Planning Board File 23-01, Site Plan Review and Special Permit, JBM Braintree LLC, Torrington Properties as our applicant. This is the Chick-fil-A project. Um, this hearing will be continued without testimony to May 9th um, at 7.15, so we just need a motion to continue. Motion by Member Grove, do we have a second? Second by Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Great. Um, we just have one more item on our agenda before we can adjourn this evening, and that is approval of meeting minutes. Um, the only minutes um, that are up for approval this evening are the January 10th, 2023 minutes. Um, does anybody have any comments or revisions on those minutes? If nobody does, we just need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. A motion by Member Grove. Do we have a second? Second, second by Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion. motion by Member Grove. Do we have a second? Second by Member Kent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Great. Thank you so much. Have a great night.